Okay everybody, quick little tip about the clutch, because I had a heck of a time trying to figure out why when I went to go to pull the clutch lever it would stick. And as you can see, inside the pressure plate, there's, there's grooves and it's all banged up right there. So what happened was I was getting ready to go put the clutch cover back on and I went to go pull the clutch lever to test it and the clutch lever wouldn't move. It was frozen. I thought, hmm, that's kind of odd. So I checked the worm gear and the clutch push rod and everything was working fine. So I I figured, well, it has to be something with the, either the clutch basket, maybe it has grooves on it, which I'll show you right now. 
Sometimes on these old bikes, or any motorcycle for that matter, the clutch basket can get grooves in it right here where the discs move because there will be some slop in here and they move back and forth and it, it grinds in a little groove right here. But that's not the case with this bike, so usually what, what that will do is it will cause the, the clutch plates and the friction discs to get caught up on the groove so you won't be able to move the clutch. But as I said, there's no grooves on here, so I thought, well, that's kind of odd. As I said, I figured it had to be something to do with the pressure plate and the light bulb came on when I was putting the pressure plate back on and I was putting the springs in and I noticed there was there was little grooves in here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and then I'll reinstall the clutch and I'll double check to make sure it works but this is going to fix it. This is why the clutch was hanging up. That being said, if you have a, a bike that the clutch, when you go to pull the lever, the clutch is frozen, it could be many things, and it's very unlikely that it's this, but I've never come across this before working on a bike, so it's it's interesting to note, because I was sitting there scratching my head for a little bit until I figured it out, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, and I'll deburr it, and I'll throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and then I'll go ahead and reassemble it, and now we'll have a working clutch. So I'm going to throw this in the ultrasonic and then we'll go ahead and get this done back together. Real quickly, I wanted to explain what I'm doing here. As you can see, I have the main jet sitting out, and I have these numbers attached to them. And the, that number that's written on the bag is the size of the drill in thousandths of an inch. So 1065 is 0 .1065, 106 thousandths, 5 tenths. So the largest drill I'm going to use right now is 0 .120, which is just under an eighth of an inch. And as you can see, I have each main jet sitting out. Now, the reason I'm drilling the main jets out is because Unfortunately, Makuni doesn't make jets large enough that will give me enough fuel. This engine doesn't make enough vacuum to pull enough fuel out of the float bowl because the size, the bore size of the Venturi is way too large. So the velocity of the air is really slow and the slow moving air makes a weak vacuum signal which in turn means that it won't pull enough fuel through the main jet. So I went up to the largest main jet that I could get and it's still not big enough. It's running out of fuel at way up throttle. I was able to drill the jet out large enough to where now it's actually making a little bit of boost, but I still need to go larger.
Okay, that was the point one oh one five main jet that I just ran right there. Unfortunately, I'm feeling kind of bad for my neighbors and I don't want to keep flying up and down the street. So in order to finish the jetting, I'm going to have to take it out to a, a private road out in the desert. So that's where I'll finish up the jetting. But there's one thing I wanted to point out before I jump to the next thing. So you notice I'm running a merge collector right here, but I don't have a clamp on here and it's not welded together. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is cut slots in this and then I'm going to put a T-bolt clamp there and a T-bolt clamp there. And I think that'll prevent a lot of the exhaust gas from escaping because I think that's part of the reason why the turbo is not spooling up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then after I do that I'm going to go ahead and wire in the two-step and then that's when I'll take it out to the desert and continue the jetting. This is the Dynatech DRL 300 and it's going to allow me to adjust the launch RPM so I can build boost from a launch and you can see it's adjustable right here you can go from 6,000 to 12,000 RPM. What we're looking at right now is the clutch, and this is a this is a neutral safety switch, but I'm going to use it to trigger the two-step. So when you pull the clutch in, it'll get switched 12 volts, so that's when the two-step will get power. So whatever I set the two-step to, when you pull the clutch in, that's what it's going to that's what the launch RPM is going to be. So it'll hold the revs at 6,000 RPMs, and then you just dump the clutch and it disengages. This is also an advantage because when I run it through here, you can shift with the throttle wide open and just fan the clutch because it'll it'll kill the ignition when you pull the clutch in. So I'm going to modify that exhaust and once I have the exhaust squared away I'm going to go ahead and make a little mini pan to mount this and then I'll go ahead and wire this up. Supposedly this only this is going to need four I'm only going to need four or so of these wires so the install shouldn't take too long. Mm -hmm. 